Why don't you come inside? It's my day off. I'm gonna make some chicken for you. Come on. I mean, on a normal day off for me, I like still want to shoot, get some reps up, but I try to do something fun with my family, hang out with my dog. I was expecting to come get done with the season and walk into a house, but this has been my off-season crib. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on my day off, but I'm gonna finish up my day hanging out with my friends. At night when I think of you, I wonder if you ever think of me. Searching your name on my phone is a part of my nightly routine. Guys, how's it going? I'm Quinn92, you caught me reading a little poetry from my recent poetry book, not a big deal. Why don't you come inside? It's my day off, I'm gonna make some chicken for you. Come on! And what do you know, my beautiful wife, Macy's in here, cutting up some veggies for us. It's a chicken Greek feta bowl that my wife and I eat pretty often on weekdays. We, we actually do. do. She's yeah. really gotten me into like cooking. I've always wanted to be a chef deep down. Like I'm a big fan of like Action Bronson. Just tatted up chefs, like that's kind of what I want to be, you know? <laughs> so the Mustard Mike Instagram page, I was just like, I think it'd be cool to do something that was a bit of a parody of, of, of like real food blogs. And it's food that you rarely make yourself. Yeah. It's typically but, something that I've made or from a restaurant. It's basically all her stuff that I just take <laughs> photos of. Let's go. <laughs> Here you go. So yeah, we back here host a lot. Someone I'd want to cook for, my number one answer would be Bill Murray. He's not a musician, but he's like my favorite person. I have a Bill Murray tattoo here. Musician, Sam Cooke probably. It's, <laughs> did you see what he did with his head? He just nudged me under my arm. <laughs> my number one collab would be Jack Johnson. Um, it'd be like a dream come true, so. And, and his music's fantastic, so. I love Wes Anderson movies. Every time I see one of his films, I'm just inspired with like a new cover art to do. You know, with so much music on Spotify, I always wanted to make sure my cover arts were like distinctive and could stand out in crowds of other music. Um, like if you're scrolling Spotify, I always want something that would like catch your eye. So I thought Wes Anderson was a perfect person to kind of like try to be similar to. It's crazy because I haven't toured in like two years, so I really, really can't wait. Favorite performance ever. I'm curious what you think about this, but it's probably La Palooza, 2018. Totally. Oh, yeah. We grew up going to that, mm -hmm. so finally seeing you play one of those stages. It was like a it was sunset. Just the most special. The sun was feeling. setting during the set. It was just like so perfectly nostalgic. I'll never forget when we were in Germany. where you lost your voice and like literally could not get the lyrics out, and the whole crowd just like finished every song yeah. for you. Yeah, that was terrifying. Yeah. I'm gonna go get some work done. Um, it's a day off, but you know, it, there really are no days off. Let's go. It's funny because I feel like uh, I feel like a good chunk of my fans still don't know how to say my name correctly, which is which is I think at this point just funny. Oh, I'm sorry, Quinchy. <laughs> Quinchy. That's not how you say the name though. Uh, Quinn X C? That's what I have here. Quinn X C. Okay, so yeah. Alexa, play Quinn X C I I. Here's the latest album by Quinn 92, Change of Scenery 2 on Amazon Music. It's Quinn 92, just to set the record straight. Um, it comes from an acronym that I started when I was in college because I, I my, my real name's Mike, but I was going by Mike T. But I felt like it was just too nickname ish and I didn't really feel like people would take me seriously with that name. So I wanted to come up with something that was a little more like grounded and, and not only just like sounded cool, but felt like like it symbolized me in a way. So I came up with this acronym called QUIN, which stands for quit unless your instincts are never neglected. So basically just go after something you love if you have an instinct to pursue it and you know makes you feel good. And, and yeah, I thought that was cool. And then we had to attach the XCII, the Roman numeral to it later because there was a dude who had the name QUIN already so XCII is the Roman numeral for 92, which was the year that I was born. So that's how you get Quinn 92. But I, I didn't actually make my own music till sophomore year of high school um, with my friend who I rapped with and we went by Mixed Minds and we would literally just like get beats off YouTube and using GarageBand just record like 16 bars each. And you know, it wasn't good and we both knew that, but we, we fell in love with the process I think of making music and just thought it was a really cool 
you know, hobby. And I think slowly I started getting better and better at it. And I think one day I kind of realized I had some people who actually like liked it. It's the number one pop album in the world. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Ariana. Sorry, Justin Bieber. Bieber, how do you say that? Being from, uh, from Michigan, from Metro Detroit, it influences my music definitely from just, you know, I, my parents put me on to like Motown when I was a kid. So I feel like I naturally was just in this Motown sort of like soul environment and fell in love with the way that that music sounded and the way that it just made people move and, and dance. And it definitely channels into my music as far as melodies go. And I always wanna make sure my melodies are super catchy. And despite what I'm saying, I wanna make sure you feel something from the melodies. I'm gonna take a break. Let's go kick the soccer ball around. So before we kick the ball around, guys, I gotta put on a jersey. Favorite soccer jerseys, favorite jerseys in general. This is a retro LA Galaxy jersey, super fire. Another Galaxy jersey is Latan Ibrahimovic. The man himself, when he was playing on the team, gave this to me, custom Quinn 92. Chelsea though, this is my favorite soccer team in the world. And on the back here, it says Cranberry with the number three. You're probably like, what? who is that? Who's Cranberry? It's something that we say before shows in my tour group. So we all put our hands in. We go, one, two, three, cranberry. Soccer. Aside from food, aside from music, is my third favorite passion. Probably my second favorite thing to do in the world. I ended up playing in high school. Um, almost played collegiately, but decided I wasn't gonna go pro. So would have kind of been a waste of time. Even if like, it's not, you know, something I'm the best at anymore. It's just for me just to get outside and like play with the soccer ball is really cool. My favorite player is DDA Drogba from Chelsea. I'm trying to get a tattoo of him. He's the GOAT. So my wife started a home decor company called Sanctuary recently. Let's go see if she needs my help. How about you just read this order out? We need a Suna sipping tumbler. What is that? I've learned so much about home decor, like, like this. this. This is called a cruet. These are really cool. This is perfect for anyone who wants like cutting up things and serving it. Like, what is this? Absolutely adorable. So this is probably what I'm gonna do the rest of the day. Thanks for checking out what a day off looks like in our life. We love you. Have a great day. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> coming up next. Go do the other things that interest you. Go do other things that give you energy that you have fun with. I want that person to believe that they can't stop me. You know, when you're a real hooper, you're elite athlete, some those days off, you can't help it to want to get in the gym. You have that itch, you have that urge. I think it comes out on the court, just seeing how animated she can get after an end one or a good play. She's not afraid to display emotion during the game which I think is fantastic, and it's actually good for the women's sport. I'm dribbling with my head down. I'm not a confident dribbler. That's how I'm assessing it. Stoudemire, I call him Yoda sometimes, so I feel like he's really wise. I didn't start playing basketball until like late sixth grade. I was not interested at all in sports. Um, and then something just clicked. I had a good coach. I had good teammates, and I really enjoyed the sport. The thing that really stands out is just the spirit of what makes her who she is. It's her positive energy and her work ethic. Hi, I'm Cameron Brink, a uh, Stanford women's basketball player, two-time gold medalist, NCAA champion. Welcome to my day. I think it's important to like get in here, do your work, but then when you're not working, go do the other things that interest you. Go do other things that give you energy that you have fun with. I mean, on a normal day off for me, I like, I still want to get in the gym. I still want to shoot, get some reps up, but I try to do something fun with my family, um, hang out with my dog. Today, we're going to the beach. Uh, gonna play some spike ball, eat some good food, maybe do some Pilates, and just chill out with the fam. We're riding in my parents' Sprinter van, so it's like a big camper van, and <laughs> I get to chill in the back on this nice bed. I don't really get a lot of time to do fun stuff on off days. Usually, I'm doing schoolwork or um, <laughs> training or just like napping all day. So it's nice to get out and do something fun and different. It's pretty hard to keep Cameron away from the court just because it's what she loves. And even on her off days, I think it's something that helps her relax and recharge. I look at all of Cameron's accomplishments so early on in her life. And I'm just excited to see what else there is to come. I guess I've kind of always been able to move 
pretty well for my size. I mean, both my parents played Division I basketball at Virginia Tech, so I think I kind of, um, their amazing genes got passed down to me. <laughs> I feel really thankful to have my height. I used to be really insecure about it, but now I'm extremely thankful for it, and it, it helps me do what I love. Raising Cameron like any child, it's, it's been a journey. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have two really special kids with, uh, with Cameron and Cy. You know, Cameron's journey has been pretty extraordinary. And I think part of our learning along the way is, uh, has been to give her space to be her own person, to strike a balance between being the disciplinarian and knowing when to push her when she didn't want to get out of bed and go to practice or study, but then giving her the, the space to be the person that she, she needs to be. But she's been a, a pleasure to, to watch grow up. She has two sides. so. From a basketball perspective, she's very competitive and fiery. And off the court, she's just super fun-loving, silly, compassionate, kind. She does have an edge, though. You know, that will come out. And then, you know, we, we're continuously trying to help her smooth out the edges. I feel like almost every meal I eat is a cheat meal, in a sense. <laughs> but I love to read. I've definitely been getting into meditation more, say positive affirmations. Breath work helps if like I'm feeling anxious or worried about something. And then just spending time with family, I think. I mean, it's my favorite thing to do. They never forced me into playing. That's why I started so late. They, they just kind of wanted me to be happy in whatever I was doing. And I really appreciate that because I think if I was forced into it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like it as much now. Um, but of course, I mean, like, they know the sport, they know what they're talking about, so hearing their feedback <laughs> was definitely tough at times, but I mean, I definitely take what they say seriously and they're both huge role models to me. I think my dad tells me a lot that like any publicity is good pu publicity, like not everyone knows who I am truly and if they're basing what they know of me off of just social media or what they see on TV, like that's not an accurate depiction of who I truly am. I definitely want to play professionally. Um, I would love to play overseas. Yeah, I mean, that would be the dream. I want to play basketball for as long as I can. But then after that, I mean, I just kind of see where life takes me. Today is my off day, but I still um, got shots up, and I think that's it's important to me to still get in the gym somehow, whatever I do. Um, even if it's just ball handling or shooting, I think it's really important for me to just spend time in the gym and get some work done because basketball is therapy to me and it helps me get my mind off of things. So I think it's really important that I try to get in the gym as much as possible and spend time um, bettering myself as a player. And I think it's so important as an athlete to take time for yourself because you're always surrounded by coaches, trainers, teammates, and that can get kind of exhausting. So taking some time to be alone and just with your own thoughts and uh, like reflecting on things, I think it's really important to reflect on where you are, how your mind is, um, how you're doing mentally. I mean, all elite athletes, they just want to go, 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 like constantly be be in the gym, getting better, and it, it really is a skill to learn how to take some time off to recuperate and to allow your body to rest, because if you don't allow yourself to rest, like you're just digging yourself into a hole where it's just even harder rec to recover from. I definitely am, am getting better at like letting my body take a break. Coming up next. Off season, you can have fun, be out here, do this, do this. Step into the field, it's time to flip the switch. I'm Lauren Humphrey, this is the Mark Hill Oasis. And this is my day off. Come check it out with me. I've had this place for coming up on a year. So a lot's been done. Marquee Oasis, it really didn't have much meaning, but it just sounded like a name. And when I said it out loud, trying to figure out what it, what it could be, it just seemed to stick with me. And so I, I went with it and um, I haven't looked back. This is the crib. All this is gonna be gone. So this is gonna be just one big open room with the kitchen. When you guys come back, this house is gonna be booming. It's gonna be booming. With Corona, things have been a little delayed. I was expecting to come get done with the season and walk into a house, but I just love being out here. I love, I've really become more nature-filled. My dad was like, why don't you get a camper? I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get a camper. So this has been my off-season crib, as you see. Pretty nice camper, I mean, I think it's, I think it's state-of-the-art. We got the living room, nice, beautiful couch. Uh, look at that. This turns into that. Boom, I have slept there before. Then you got the table. Nice little table. Sectional couch. And then a nice, easy bedroom. You know, you don't need much. I recently just signed a deal with the Ravens. A new contract means you get a little more, you know, money. And my coach is like, why are you living in the camper? I'm like, 
What do you mean? Well, I live in it's been funny to tell people I'm living in Canberra, but it's been even funnier when they come and visit me and then I'm like, this is where I'm living. Family was probably the biggest reason why I, I, I got this place. What I'm most excited about is these trees. So I love fruit. I love fruit, love, love, love fruit. And I've always wanted to just be able to walk outside, grab some fruit, and then keep going. And then also alongside this side. So it was a long day laying all this grass. It was, uh, it was a good workout, um, but I didn't know that. It's, Something I learned, I didn't know land side would be that tiring, but I really love doing things that involve outside when it's like hard work. You know, I, I've kind of gotten a lot of workouts from, from doing this. It's some good workouts, so I, I really like the, the outdoor work when it's, when it's pretty tough. Off season, you can have fun, be out here, do this, do this. Got to train still, but when you step into the field, it's time to flip the switch, and that's kind of how I saw Saban. He was a little smile with you, laugh with you, but when it was time to work, it was time to work, and when it was time to have fun, he, he had fun. And the fun was after winning, and he's a guy that just doesn't really like to lose. I don't think he cares so much about winning. I think he's, he just doesn't like to lose. So I'm gonna show you guys a little spin around the property. Got a lot of water to cover and a lot of land to cover, so let's, let's get started. So, I got a lot of water out here, so I named all the water. Most of them have some sort of significant meaning. So the street I grew up on was uh, Woodbine Lane. So this one is uh, uh, Woodbine Pier here. So, see if you got these trees. This point here is what a beaver leaves after it gets done. So right now they're getting at this tree. They're getting at that tree. This whole thing, all this is from them. This is of course be where the pool will be and the gym. And so that'll be Marlene Way in, my, in honor of my grandmother. So this is gonna be a shooting range. Um, you got a lot of land like this. The really cool thing that's been special for me and other people, you don't have to go to a shooting range. You can just come out here and this is making it a lot more safe, having a, a roof, um, your own individual bay with your own little box that comes up here. That was kind of the vision behind this, um, to have a safer way to shoot guns and, and different things like that. Stuff's everywhere, I got another side-by-side -side four wheeler tractor. These are fun once it gets warm out, which is basically getting warm out. Some fishing reels, which I need to grab one of these. I've learned a lot. It's been a, it's been a, a big year of just of learning and, and growing uh, about things that I can't really ever thought I would need to know. I had really no um, envision for it. I just thought it was some land. And it's been a lot of learning. It's, it's been cool though. Guys, thanks for coming out, checking out a day with me. Had fun, but I seriously gotta go finish this house, so you guys gotta go. Get out of here. Coming up next. I just have fun, just have a break from basketball. It's just like a fun refresher. During the school week, I usually work out six or seven days a week. My name is Gabriella Hawkes. I'm 17 and I play basketball. But today is my day off, so let's have some fun. I like to do something because I don't like to just lay in bed all day. I've been thinking about me going to college and that I'm not gonna have easy access to hang out with my family and friends as much. So I've been taking that into account to not take anything for granted when I'm here. I think days off for an athlete are really important because you don't wanna get burnt out. You want to give your body a rest, your mind a rest. You wanna have the sport you're playing be fun still rather than it feels like a chore. So three of my cousins, Olivia, Sofia, and Neta, they'll all be dancing today. When we were younger, we would always make up some random dances to show to our family to perform, you know, like at Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, just kind of any time we were all together. I just have fun, just have a break from basketball. It's just like a fun, like, refresher. Speaking of which, let's go. My cousins and I love making TikToks, so we're here at the studio learning some dances. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two, three, seven, eight. Let's go. Five, six, seven, eight. 
I started dancing when I was in preschool. I started ballet, and then I did some hip hop classes, and then I found that I prefer the hip hop classes. Having a background in dance really helps because basketball is like a little dance. It's a rhythm when you're dribbling. The footwork is the same like in dance. <laughs> studio every now and then just to dance and rehearse a little bit and then I heard some music in here and I was like what's going on and they were just dancing having fun and I wanted to join I want to get in on this little dance can oh. I join of course I can take, my spot. I can take your spot yes, you, you promise can. I promise okay <laughs> let's do it <laughs> you're so tall compared to me so we start in this in this straight line formation here. yeah you're back here cool. five six seven and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring it down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and slide. Slide. Back step, step, and grab, and grab. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> we can try and speed it up to tempo if you'd like to. Yeah, let's try tempo. You're free. Would you like to come with us? I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Closer to me, tell you something you can feel. Could you give me something I've been looking for all my life? You're so fearful, I can take the wheel. I'll never ask you why. Just give me your Whenever we do that, I feel like we're just like on a field somewhere, yeah, yeah like flying. Yeah. Tessa was awesome. It was great meeting her. I've watched her videos for a long time now, so it's cool to meet her. She's really sweet and an amazing dancer. It was really inspiring just because I want to be a professional basketball player, so it's cool to meet someone living her dream. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on my day off, but I got some training to do tomorrow, and I'm going to finish up my day hanging out with my friends. See you guys.